You're the guy people call when they need a helping hand, moving furniture, unloading a truck. But lately, your shoulder's been acting up, and you're the one who's calling for help. And that's the moment you realize you can no longer shoulder the load. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for orthopedic care with a range of surgical and non-surgical treatments. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better, the Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 674, Shay's Weight Loss Journey Weekly Updates. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I'm Amanda Valentine. Shay's back. What's up? What's going on with you, girl? Oh, you know, not much. (laughs) (laughs) After uh, you went uh, ziplining in caves this weekend. Oh, my God. It was so cool. Tell me about that. Uh, It was awesome. First of all, because I couldn't do that before because I was definitely over the weight limit. So that's fucking awesome. Um, But it was really neat. It was like basically jumping into darkness. And <laughs> it was amazing. I was like, ah, OK, so we're already planning on going to Red River Gorge and zip lining. And there you're like 300 feet in the air. Um, And like at the cave, we were I think the highest one, we were like 90 feet in the air. But it's like you're falling to your death if you die. <laughs> like, oh I mean, God. if you fall, like, yeah. You're landing on some rocks like (laughs) you get this new boyfriend. You are getting all these like crazy adventures. That's right. Yeah. But I didn't have anybody to do this crap with before. So it's fun. I wouldn't go zip lining with you. (laughs) I'm not. I don't know. I'm not. There is there is somebody here at the gym I met that went zip lining like last year. Yeah. And couldn't stop themselves and just just instinctively put their leg out and just smash the hell out of their (gasps) foot. And I'm like, yeah, pass on that. Yeah. No, that kind of freaks me out. Yeah, like the cave one, like there were things that were stopping us. So it wasn't like we had to stop ourselves. I don't know what that will be like at the gorge. But um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty much like you ride the zip line and then it stops you. So nice. We see in the zip line where you were worried about, you know, weight limits before skydiving that you didn't do I know. Before. Yeah. I mean, because even when so he like planned this day for us um, and then he was too excited. So he told me what we were doing. But the first thing I did was go look at the weight limit as if I was going to be above it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I was like, that would be horrible in this like new relationship to get there and then be like, oh, sorry, bro, too fat. So <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> that would be awful. So, um, yeah. And then it's just cool to not have to worry about that. Like yeah. the whole time we were zip lining, I was like, I never could have done this. Even like physically, some of the stuff I like you have to do, like I couldn't have done that before. So it's that's just super cool to be able to do that. Yeah, stuff. that's awesome. Yeah. Have yeah. you had the? Because we've talked about this before that you have not had the conversation with him yet that you've lost weight. Mm-hmm. Have you had that conversation yet? So sort of we didn't talk about it much um, before I met his family. We had like a conversation um, just because I was nervous to meet his family. And I, I don't know. I always have this idea that men are like ashamed to like introduce me to people because I am overweight so and then definitely like I never met my ex's best friend and there was lots of weird stuff his uh, his best friend said about overweight women so oh I was felt like that was why I didn't meet him what a douchebag so basically before I met his family I just told him like hey like I'm nervous to meet them um and I all I said was that I had lost a significant amount of weight I didn't say how much um and me and my therapist have talked about why like that number is such a big deal to me, but it just makes me feel like when I say like, oh yeah, I've lost 90 pounds. Like that's like, wow, I was really overweight. So it's like an embarrassing thing for me. Um, but yeah, we had that conversation, um, but we haven't really talked about it otherwise. So that's interesting. Yeah. I just think it's so interesting that it's an embarrassing thing for you. I know. Yeah. Even like when I was talking to my therapist about it, she was like, when you talk about yourself, it's almost like you're, you think you're as big as a couch. Like, and I was like, that's how I feel all the time, even now. So her and I are working on like trying to help me see myself as I like really am. Um, and then I've, I've just been having like a butt ton of like body image issues, like just freaking hating what I look like. So we're working on that stuff right now too, which is good stuff, but it's just, 
really confusing when I've lost this much weight to still like really not like my body. So yeah. yeah. Well, and I just, I am really, I'm really happy that you're, you know, you're saying that and you're willing to say that on this podcast yeah. and say that publicly, I think, because I feel like so many people probably feel that same way, but mm-hmm. don't talk about it because yeah. it's, it's like, oh, I, I've lost this weight and I'm supposed to feel like this hot yeah. bitch. And so it's to celebrate and post all the photos online and yeah. everything like that to not everybody has that experience. No. And then it almost feels shameful that you're not having that experience is how right. I would guess it feels. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there was basically, I was talking to her about how I feel like I waited too long to like, alter my body or I waited too long to like fix my relationship with food and to lose weight and like my body's just ruined and so then it's like she was describing it as basically I'm like mourning what could have been or you know like it's like basically I'm in mourning right now is how she was describing it because in my mind like I like abused my body for so long that it's it's too late and I'm just gonna look like this forever so that kind of stuff is really hard to like alter thinking that way too. So Yeah. Is I was just having a conversation this morning with one of the trainers here at the gym. Um, I got, I can't remember how we got into it uh, of just basically thinking about, you know, we, Oh, this is the conversation, right? How much of the mental aspect goes yeah. into this whole journey, mm-hmm. every part of it. Yeah. And, He's just like, I, I, you know, I can't imagine, you know, basically the, the mental health issues that come or are, are, are the root problem of, of a yeah. lot of things. He's like that basically it's out on display for everybody, yeah. which is why it's you're mm-hmm. so in your head about it. It's yeah. like people can see yeah. that you're not loving yourself in the yeah. best way or you can be mm-hmm. a- abusing yourself in certain ways. And he's like, I can't imagine having yeah. that and having mental health issues myself. Mm-hmm. But it's not on display for everybody right. in, in, a, in a certain way and what that's yeah. got to be like. And I'm like, well, yeah. And I don't think this was the correct thing to say at all. But whenever I was meeting with different surgeons to get my mm-hmm. skin removal surgery, which I will reiterate with that, I'm like, I would absolutely take the loose skin back on my abdomen mm-hmm. to keep the weight gone. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm very happy with the results and exercise has been so much easier. Aesthetically, I feel better. Yeah. Um, but um, cause I know so many people get in their head about yeah. the skin removal. I don't know why that is such a hot topic and people yeah. shame people for it, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother discussion. But I'm like, when I was talking to surgeons, one of them that I did not go with yeah. here in Cincinnati, um, was like, yeah, you're basically wearing a coat of your bad decisions. Oh. And I'm like, and obviously that stuck with me and I'm yeah. like, Ooh, and I'm like, that's such an awful way to look at mm-hmm. it. But it's like. I'm like, I guess that's not wrong. Like, you know, again, like I think the things like that are, you know, things on your body. Mm -hmm. I think it's how you choose to look at it. Right. You can choose to look at it is these are all of my bad decisions. Oh, my God, I did this to myself. I am unhappy with this. Or I think you can take the choice of being like, no, I'm a strong person. Like these stretch marks are battle scars. This extra skin, I earned Mm -hmm. this. And and choosing to see those things instead of imperfections of like what makes you strong and Mm -hmm. what makes you, I don't want to say successful, but like proud of yourself. You know what I mean? And I think that, again, is part of the mental health journey of everything is I think that a lot of us so long, constantly beat Mm -hmm. ourselves up and tell ourselves the negative and yeah this is my bad decision yeah I did this to myself oh Mm -hmm. yuck I'm I'm a piece of shit yeah just changing it to be like no I'm strong and yeah it's so so hard to make that shift even though intellectually you get Mm -hmm. it and you should tell yourself that but really fully believing it and owning it it's another thing yeah you know what's been helpful for me is like I gained a lot of weight really fast when I was younger because of trauma and basically as a kid I was unconsciously using food to cope like it was my therapist describes it as like I created this like insulation basically to keep me safe and then that's what I did my whole life like that she's like helped me realize I was literally just doing the only thing I knew to do Mm -hmm. and to cope and to feel safe and so it's like at this point in my life, I'm like, I literally was like, I went through some hard stuff and I was doing all that I knew to do. And so it's like trying to have like 
empathy or sympathy for myself, you know, is like, that's very helpful, but it's hard to do. I like, I keep pictures of myself from when I was little in order to like, see like, okay, this little girl went through a lot of stuff and did whatever she could to cope. And I'm still her like, yeah. you know, so it's like, okay, now how do I love her in a better way? Like I've still been through all that stuff, but how do I love myself in a better way and cope in a better way? So it's like, I didn't know how to do that before I do now. So I have to look at it in that way. Like, sure. I waited a really long time to find new coping mechanisms, but I did the best that I freaking could. Yeah. And, and we have, similar backgrounds yeah so I'm in the exact same boat and yeah yeah shifting the mindset to oh I'm you know I'm I'm so lazy I have no motivation I did Mm -hmm. this to myself and and all the self-hatred things that you can say to yourself about your own body I think that everybody can say that to themselves no matter what size you Uh, are yeah um that to be like again I I gained weight a lot of weight for Mm -hmm. similar reasons as trauma response but to almost you know flip the script to be like I'm thankful that Mm -hmm. little me like was smart enough yeah to know that that was going to help like that was I mean especially as a kid it was very suicidal right um to be like I didn't choose that option Mm -hmm. I chose to eat yeah instead and that saved me right and so instead of hating myself Mm -hmm. for allowing myself to get this big or whatever else I'm going to say to myself it's like no well you that's what you had to do to survive yeah and now we're no longer in that survival mode which Mm -hmm. is what I I talk to my therapist about all the time which is one of the reasons I'm like such a go hard and workaholic of like these are all survival things that you've done like you've had to run so hard and work so hard to get out of situations But you don't need to do that anymore. Right. You don't need to binge eat to save yourself. You mm-hmm. don't need to run a billion miles an hour to yeah. get out of a situation. You're a different person now. That little girl got you out. Yeah. So now that you're out, how does adult Amanda yeah. learn, you know, like exactly like you said, new coping mechanisms yeah. and, and learn how to live life not in this same cycle over and over and yeah. over again and That's why, I mean, I think therapy is so incredibly Mm -hmm. important and, you know, so many of us deal with so many things in in different ways. And, um, you know, I I have a person in my life in particular that's like, well, I didn't go through any trauma as a kid. So like, I I don't know why the problems I got. I'm like, oh, everybody's got something to deal with. (laughs) Yeah, literally everyone. Yeah. Like it's it it doesn't have to be some monumental thing. You know what I mean? If it's monumental to you in some way, then that counts. If if the rest of society doesn't agree that that's traumatic enough, you know, air quotes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter if it was meaningful enough to you mm-hmm. to shift your perspective of yourself or to put you into yeah. bad coping mechanisms, then you should address it and get out of those bad patterns, which is hard as hell. Yes, <laughs> it is. Getting, I mean, I've been spending the past several years working so much on myself and, mm-hmm. and trying to better myself and grow. And it, I mean, it's, it's nasty. Yeah. It's like bawling in the shower, yeah, writing notes to myself and crying and like mm-hmm. ugly crying yeah. and really lo- hard things you don't want to own up yeah. about yourself. But it's like, if you want to get better, that's, you're just gonna, yeah. no one's going to do it but you mm-hmm. and well, it's work. And you do end up bawling in the shower because you got to feel that shit all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh man, I'm not binge eating. I'm feeling something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not numbing out to it. And it's uh-huh. like, I mean, yeah, and I'd say that I did a lot, a lot of that on my own, mm-hmm. which I'm pretty proud of. And yeah. I've had even my therapist said, like, yeah. I'm proud of you for like, I can't believe you did some of these things on yeah. your own. But you know, going to therapy the past like year and a half now, it's just like having permission to talk about these things that you're just like, oh, this is so ugly about me. No yeah. one should know them. And then mm-hmm. you just let them burn inside of you. Yep. And it's like, no wonder I was just binge eating every yeah. single night and secret eating and hating myself to yeah. some crazy degree because I'm just letting these things burn me alive and not letting them out yeah and you feel ashamed so that's why you're not talking about it yeah and it's like as soon as you start talking about it you're like whoa like that shame just kind of disappears it's crazy and this conversation right here I think is just so freaking important because this is what's not addressed enough about 
a weight loss journey mm-hmm. or just a journey to become healthier. Yeah. But I mean, obviously specifically weight loss, cause we're both yeah. coming from a weight loss thing mm-hmm. that it's like, Oh, we'll go on weight watchers or Ugh. Hey, do keto yeah. or, you know, um, Order the specific mm-hmm. meal prep and count your macros and, and your yeah. calories. And uh, yes, that's all a part of it because yeah. you do have to. I mean, those are some of the things you got to do. Yeah. But the reason why you'll go in cycles and that'll work for a while and it doesn't is because a lot of us have this, Yeah. you know, our connection with food or how we use mm-hmm. food or, you know, just our emotions or yeah. our, how we feel about our bodies and all of that is a major role in all of this yeah. and nobody freaking talks about no. that because they just want to sell you crap yeah. to be like you're too fat be Ugh. less fat if it was that easy none of us would be fat that's what's so frustrating right and then oh i just had a conversation sometime this week i can't even remember i don't know everything is so chaotic all the time that i don't remember who i was even having this conversation with about like some weight loss gummy oh god right and uh and i'm like yeah you think that's gonna work like uh-huh. you, you think that's that's something worth spending money on, because if that worked, wouldn't all of us be we'll have a six pack right now? Yeah. That you know, what we if if there was something that worked for that, like mm-hmm. then, poof. Yeah. This problem or what we perceive as a problem for ourselves is is yeah. is no longer a problem anymore. Mm-hmm. That's crap. Yeah. Especially in a gummy. Like my God. Um, <laughs> Also, I mean, they're never, I mean, I'm never going to partner with them or anything anyway, but like those golly gummies, oh, it's God. just garbage. Uh-huh. It's garbage. It's like yeah. $20. Mm-hmm. If, if you want apple cider vinegar, drink apple cider vinegar or put mm-hmm. it in there. And P.S. Apple cider vinegar is not going to make you lose weight. No. <laughs> so it's just playing on your emotions and playing mm-hmm. on what you want and what you want yeah. right now. And that's stuff that like. I've hook, line, and sinkered for oh, so yeah. long to the point now where it's just kind of like, I'm glad I realize how much you're just told your body's not supposed to look this yeah. way. You're a bad person for mm-hmm. doing this. Nobody's going to want you. Uh, and here's the solution. Yeah. It's to make money. And it's so, uh, yeah, I I, it. it makes me so mad. The amount of money people make off of people that feel self-conscious or feel fat. Like yeah. they make so, I mean, and I've done it. Like I've, what I love now is I'm spending money on things like exercise and things like that that I love instead of spending money on uh, like a liquid diet or, yeah. you know, like a weight loss program. Like I don't I can spend my money on stuff that's like actually going to help me and actually bring me joy. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think it's important to you and I having this conversation mm-hmm. Not that we're shaming anybody that's doing that right, right now, but yeah. it's both two people that have done those things yep. and have done those things for a long time. Yes. And realizing both of us losing a significant amount of weight and keeping it off, mm-hmm. that those things aren't the solution. And no. I don't know if it's one of those things that you have to live through to yeah. really feel it. Or can you just hear two chicks on a podcast having this conversation <laughs> yeah. and you're like, okay, I'm not going to do the liquid diet. Yeah. Maybe I should try something different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I think that if I would have heard this in a podcast 15 years ago, I don't yeah. know if that it would have changed my mind. You yeah. know what I mean? I do feel like part of it is go- going through all those things and realizing that they don't work. I feel like everybody kind of has to do that, which sucks, but I think it takes like a certain amount of failure and trying lots of different things to realize like those things are so temporary. Yeah. Like, and, and to realize that you really just like can't give up on it when things no. don't work out like mm-hmm. that. Like if you really want this for yourself yeah. for your good reasons yeah. to do it, yeah, then you're going to find a way that works. Right. Yeah. And you have to find what works for you. That's what's so frustrating when people are like, Oh, what are you doing? What are you eating? And it's like, everyone needs to find what works for them because what works for you, like I could never meal prep the way that you do. I'd go nuts eating the same thing every (laughs) day, but that works for you. And it's like, that's, that's part of the journey too, is finding what works. And then it's like the, I honestly think the only reason I've even been able to keep my weight off is because of therapy, because it's so much of like the mental stuff that Mm -hmm. I think that's what those diets don't do for you is teach you how to love yourself and how to cope. That's not part of it. They teach you like how to not eat basically. Yeah. 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 And that's, 
Oh uh, yeah. And I mean, I've done those too. Yeah. Like it's just, and at the time I'm like, I mean, especially doing like LA weight loss that I had never lost weight like that before. Mm -hmm. It was such a new experience and like yeah. seeing my body go in places it never did before. Where I lost 60 pounds in six months. Yeah. And in my mind at the time of like, well, this is just going to keep going and it's going to stay yeah. like this forever. Like you mm -hmm. don't have in your head at all, like, oh, I'm going to gain this back. I didn't learn anything from this. Yeah. You're just thinking like this freaking rules. I'm finally doing it. Yeah. And then that slide backwards, man, God. And I, I've had this conversation with a lot of people on Instagram um, over the past couple of weeks mm -hmm. of putting that podcast out of me gaining some weight in COVID and dealing with that of so many other people are living that right now. Yeah. And it's, it's just a frustration and shame and pain that you can't describe unless you've lived it of mm -hmm. like you worked so hard and it takes so long yeah. and working on yourself to lose weight, to gain it back again and then to lose it again. It's just freaking brutal. Yeah, it is because <laughs> you feel like a failure. You're yeah. like, I failed so many times. Why would this time be any different? Yeah. And, and to bring back to that conversation I was having earlier today at the gym of like, yeah. you know, seeing that mm -hmm. visibly. And that's like something too I brought up of like, you know, whether you, however you're losing weight, whether it's through surgery or you're taking, you're doing keto mm -hmm. or you're doing whatever, like then people can see the difference. You're yeah. getting compliments. Like people are yeah. noticing. And then when you start going in the other yeah. direction, you know, they notice that too. Yeah. There's no way they mm -hmm. don't notice that. Yeah. And even though no one's saying anything to you about it, and yeah. less whatever, everybody's mm -hmm. got their own situation in your head you're just kind of like everyone must think that i'm this huge failure yeah. i'm a loser i was so excited about this and yeah. i couldn't do it and and you're just is your brain is on fire it's yeah. awful yeah and it is like it is frustrating because you think about other things that people fail like you're trying to stop smoking like no one really has to know that like you like had a bump in a road and s smoked a cigarette but yeah. with weight it is like everyone sees like basically every coping mechanism I have is on display for everybody. And it's like, it does feel like people must constantly be judging you and having, you know, like thinking certain thoughts about you that they probably aren't. No, they're not. They're concerned yeah. about themselves. Yeah. And we like, <laughs> in our heads are like, wow, these people think that I'm crazy or these people think that like, I can't pull my life together. And those things they likely aren't even thinking. Well, they're not. And then once I think you get to a place where you do feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. you realize those people got to go anyway. Oh, oh yeah. you're judging me for gaining weight back? Bye. Yeah, I get don't need you. Yeah. Like, you try this, okay? You <laughs> yeah. try it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've learned that so much, too, of just being so worried, especially um, one morning show I was on. I mean, everybody was so judgmental and really in my head about how my, and they probably were um, very judgmental about mm -hmm. the things I was doing and then being out of that situation. I'm like, well, screw them anyway. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Of like, you don't need them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I didn't cause I moved. Right. Good. <laughs> Goodbye. But, it, but it's, it's yeah. Those people that are judging you mm -hmm. in, in a negative way, mm -hmm. I just, it's like, it's good to get in a place where you're so confident and strong with yourself mm -hmm. that you realize like they can't tear me down anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not concerned with their judgment yeah, because they're taking, that's their stuff yeah. and they're taking me to whatever thing they got going and mm -hmm. they're trying to bring me to that level wherever they're at. Yeah. And, but it does take a lot of strength to know that that's what other people are doing. Cause most right. of the time you just take it on mm -hmm. yourself and like, Oh, they must be right. And yeah. I don't know. It's again, like uh, human behavior is, is so interesting. Yeah. And I mean, uh, and there's just so many aspects of right. Bettering yourself in any sort of yeah. way that people get jealous and weird mm -hmm. and yeah. will try to tear you down because it highlights that they're not doing that themselves. Yeah. Whether you're going back to school or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. And it's just really unfortunate that that's the way a lot of people behave. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, I think it's because they're not dealing with their own crap. No. And the only, and it's not, I don't even think it's their fault half the time. They don't yeah. even realize they're doing it. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. It's just a bummer. And then it just feels like a lot of us go in circles and circles until you're just at one point, you're like, 
this isn't my circle anymore. Right. And then that's another level of the mm-hmm. journey of like cutting out the people that aren't yeah. good for it anymore. And some of those people are really close to you or family or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, then you got to be like, but if you're not here for me and what I want to do and where mm-hmm. I'm at, how, why, why do you need to be around if you're going to tear me down? Right. I don't know. That's as going through that also. Right. I mean, that's really hard. Yeah. But it's another aspect of if you love yourself, you're not going to have those people around or you're going to keep them at it like a healthy distance. So yeah. I wish I could tell like, I, and I know I'm sure this is true of everybody, but you know, obviously maybe therapists have more, uh, obviously more insight than I do of like, then like, what's the advice to love yourself more? Like I mean, everybody hears that of like, yeah. love yourself. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. Yeah, I get it intellectually, but like, yeah. You know, I think everybody's like, well, tell me the steps I need to do. Like I see TikToks and stuff Mm -hmm. like that of like, well, what do I need to do to start believing that and feeling it? Yeah. And I don't know. I can't even name any. You know what I mean? I do think it's different for everybody. Like, like for me, like affirmations are huge. Like I, that's probably something I'll do for the rest of my life because it's me talking like words of affirmation are super important to me. Like hearing that from other people. Well, I need to hear that from me too. So yeah. it's like saying positive things about myself rather than, you know, I've spent a whole lifetime just saying negative things about myself. So it's like that is one way that I really need to love myself. And for somebody else, it could be different. Yeah. But I think it's very similar to like love languages. Like how do you receive love from other people? And then you know, you need to do those same things for yourself. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. I feel like that's hard because it isn't just, again, it's like weight loss. There's not just one answer for how to love yourself. Yeah. And that's where it's like, people can't make money off of that. No, they can't. (laughs) And so then that these conversations aren't sold because it's so different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Meeting like everybody has, I mean, obviously different mental struggles, different body mm-hmm. struggles. Like we're yeah. all at different ages or we're yeah. at different heights. Yeah. <laughs> we yes, all live we in are. different places. We have different circles. Like it's mm-hmm. just like, I mean, everyone is so incredibly unique that mm-hmm. there's some principles that go across the right. board of like you'd be in a caloric deficit. Yeah. It's science. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, but the ways that you do that are so different right. for everyone. So mm-hmm. to just take some written diet plan. Yeah could work for you for a while, but will yeah. it for life and how long will it work? Right. And I, th- it's so frustrating because that's what so many people want. And I, f- yeah. I find myself in that space where, I mean, I just want to help people so much, mm-hmm. especially when you can feel like somebody's in pain from this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. all I want to do is take this away yeah. from you. I just, I know how this feels. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I could take it away. Mm-hmm. And like, tell me what to do, yeah. you know, like tell me how to eat, mm-hmm. tell me what exercises to do. Yeah. And to be like, no yeah is hard because it's like I'm not trying to deny you help yeah but it's like I can only give you broad stroke advice because you got to take it from there and that's the answer and and then it's and as a business person that's a bad answer Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you don't make money and stuff like that but it's like it's like but that's just what that's just how it works yeah yeah, it is how it works. So everybody's got to do it a little differently. Yep. And it sucks, but we're all very, very different. Yeah. And we're all not motivated all the time and it's yeah. hard. And well, and that's freaking human. I'm like, yeah. Well, there's even with the meal prop. So many people are like, I wish I had your motivation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm not always motivated. No. And <laughs> the, the, it's crazy that people think you are. It's like there's yeah, there you're never going to consistently be like killing it. Yeah. And be motivated. I'm like. And there's the, there's no way. And the way to be consistent through at least I am with meal prep is I like the results mm-hmm. a lot from it. I feel good mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. I stick to my plan. I, I, I just really enjoy all the aspects mm-hmm. of it, which yeah. is what, quote unquote, motivates me to do it. On yeah. the days that I don't want to, mm-hmm. I'm like, I know all the benefits from this. Yeah. I'm choosing to do this even though I got to be grudgingly like, Ugh. yeah, I don't feel like this today because it's what's works for me. And yeah. when I don't do it, I know what a scattered train wreck I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, I have a choice here. Which yeah. am I going to choose of yeah. two hours of like, just grit your teeth and get over it. Yeah. Or a week mm-hmm. of like, just being a mental mess. Yeah. 
Um, so it's it's stuff like that that I think it's so important to have like, I know how I, f- you know, for everybody, I know how I feel when I drink a lot of water. Mm-hmm. I know how I feel whenever I even just go for walks or move my body yeah. in a certain way. I know how I feel when I eat in a certain way and being attuned to that. And then when you're having those moments of like, mm-hmm. do I want to eat this whole pint of ice cream, which yeah. I will fully do. If I'm going to eat ice cream, the whole <sighs> pint's gone. I'm sorry. Same. That you know, do I want to do that? That's the conversation that you're going to have with yourself Mm -hmm. forever, literally forever. That is okay. Well, this is how, you know, how do I feel about this right now? How am I going to feel on the other side about Mm -hmm. this? And that's why it's like, sometimes it's a hell yes. And sometimes it's a like, I got to pass. Yeah. But that's, I think that goes along with the loving yourself. Yeah. Like having that conversation, like what is going to be best for me? And for you, it's the meal prep. Yeah. That's what in the long run is going to be the best for you. Yep. And that's a version of loving yourself. That's like when I want to eat a pint of ice cream, I'm like, how am I going to feel after that? Yeah. And then generally it's not going to be a very loving experience. Yeah. So let's not. Yeah. 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 Well, I love this conversation, but I have to train somebody upstairs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I have to go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you next week. All right. AmandaValentineBites.com.